Wired. Unplugged. Hello, everybody, and welcome Hello, Jake. to Wired Unplugged, episode 40. Um, normally, I've got like a little auto cue and it plays the jingles, but um, for, the, uh, for, the, for the video viewers rather than the audio listeners, uh, you'll see here that my, um, you know, quite minimalistic white room that I, I sort of, I've, I've got a very Kanye West at Glastonbury kind of white room that I, I yeah. host it. It's full of boxes and it's because I move home uh, tomorrow morning. So this yeah, is... I, 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 I did want to ask you, what is the sequel to Unpacking like? You've um, got ahead, you know, you're repacking. getting me on this world premiere right now. Uh, yeah, re- repacking <laughs> it, repacking. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, it, it's it's not it's not quite as exciting, but um, the the real sequel to that sequel, Unpacking Two, happens tomorrow, and I'm hoping that that'll be a little bit nicer. But um, yeah, I'm moving home. This is my last one from this setup. So, if you're listening on like Spotify or any of the audio platforms, there's others available. Um. I guess it doesn't make a single ounce of difference for you, but for those that like, I don't know, have... there'll be the reverb, there'll be you know oh, the audio density and all that. Gosh, like, yeah, jumbo. yeah. Well, hopefully yeah. it's an improvement, but uh, nonetheless, yep. So that's that's what up. Uh, hello, everybody. We're on episode forty. The fours. We're in the forties. Yeah, can't believe it. The real peak. Um, how are you doing this week? Are you okay? Just bought my sports car. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. This is one of no. my 55 PlayStation 5s that you can see yeah. here, uh, lay down on the side. Uh, now that no, I can I, afford... I, yeah. so it's good, it's good, but we should we should clarify as well because you are playing the sequel to Unpacking. We're recording this much earlier than we, than we usually right. would, right? Yeah, we are. Than we usually would. Um, but the good thing is, you know, we're, we're going a bit lighter on on the news because you know news hasn't happened yet um because we are in the past but also will be in the future um but that aside we actually have questions <laughs> we actually have we, we questions do. and topics to discuss yeah. this week which was submitted from uh the wired fam yeah which is a fantastic thing because like like you say normally when we record a little bit early not much news drops this early in the week you see mm. so we were like oh but then the questions came in and then we were like Ah, uh, so yeah, yeah. Um, questions provided to us by wired listeners and viewers, friends and foes. Um, if you have a question for the show, you can kind of email in at unplugged at wiredproductions.com. Or if you use Twitter, you can tweet us at wired P, which is the general wired account or wired unplugged. It's actually ran by somebody who spends time like putting these in Skype and everything like that, collating if, them all. If, if, just, just out of interest, if you were going to ask a question, to a foe <laughs> yeah what would it be um, just why? why 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 have you forsaken me <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I don't know i was trying to think of like uh, what happens in ghost of tsushima he he's like on a bit of a mission isn't he to like sort yeah. of get get i suppose you have to find answers i've watched too many noir movies so i don't really know you know um but so, so uh I, I guess i wouldn't say anything the silence would be deafening i i think um so that's a great question if you'd like to ask <laughs> self assassination yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah more on that in a little bit um but yeah we're going to kick off with a little bit of wired propaganda again uh we're really winging it with the jingles uh this time because uh we are putting them in post-production so we're having to do it in our head so um <clears throat> curtis fit that jingle in the post-production and we'll pretend it's happening right now Wired propaganda. Wired propaganda. Really good life, <laughs> Thank you, Kermit or Mikey Goodman. So here we are in the internal segment, uh, wide propaganda that. segment. That was really good. That was really good. <laughs> um, all right. What have we got happening in Wired Towers this week, Aaron? We're, we're, we're going to kick off with uh, a bit of a double whammy. And, you know, if this date gets pushed back, Curtis can just edit this out and we'll just skip right to the end of the show. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> but um, by the time this goes out, um, a brand new demo for Gory Cuddly Carnage and Tin Hearts are going to be announced that they're coming to Xbox. Uh, mm. And they're going to be coming to uh, Xbox uh, platforms on December 6th. So, you know, ahead of Christmas, you can get your teeth stuck into nice slices of two games that aren't coming out yeah. until 2023 and you know this is it's been a very interesting year because shows are starting to get back on the road and it feels weird that we're talking about this but there's there's a big difference between you know consuming a show and finding time to play things but then actually getting to 
enjoy everything in your own space in your own time um and i think you know demos they are still a thing and they should still be a thing uh, because not everyone can not everyone has the pleasure of going to a games common song when we're showing these games so to have that experience in your uh own home is nice and especially for um tin hearts as well for, for both of the games don't get me wrong but mm. tin hearts you know this is a game this is a game that needs to wash over you and it's it's one that you do want to wash over you because there's mm. so much atmosphere throughout the whole game there are interesting tidbits around the story um you know it you think differently probably in your own the comfort of your own space when you can noodle around with puzzles and you know mess with the game rather than your you have 10 minutes to play this demo and then you moved on so someone else can play so yeah. i think um look forward to those coming uh ahead of christmas that's great. next week in fact yeah. um yeah. and you know we're very very keen excited to hear what you uh what you all think it's a great um, thing, and I think people forget that the demos, you know, video games are different in, than films or or books or anything, because because you play them, you you have yeah. agency as a player, and like that's what you mean, isn't it? By like letting it wash over you there with ten hearts, it's like yeah, sure, you can kind of see the the Kensi and Lemons thing that that the devs say. Yeah. You can see it, and you go, yep. But you have to play it to really understand it. There's a couple of games yeah. that I like that aren't they? They're more than just uh, what they appear to be, and it's the best way to just do it and decide for yourself uh demos are such a great thing and i think that it's like you know yeah it's not nice. I, I like that we're trying to sell demos as a new concept which we don't think well, it no, is no, but that, it's just... you know that's why I, I had a dweeby little smile there because i was feeling quite nostalgic about it well, and, uh... I, I, I was gonna ask because you know i, I think we come from an era of you know uh demo discs, demo discs. In magazines yeah. and, and things like that and, that's why uh, i'm you know, smiling yeah the CD-ROM you'd get in the, the PC gaming magazines and things like that, and yeah. you know there, there were demos that I would just play over and over and over oh, again. And I oh, think, yeah. I think there are some games that I didn't um, that I played the demo over and over again. And because games was it was so expensive way back when, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. I, I never played the full games, but I played the demos, and I was like, "This is great!" And you just play it again. Yeah, it yeah, brilliant. and it was it was it was brilliant. Yeah, I, there's there's actually I I I had such a happy moment um, about a month and a half ago. Right, I was like, I ran listen to this. I ran myself a bubble bath, and I was putting on a bit of YouTube. And I found a channel called PlayStation Demo Disc Archive on no. YouTube, and it's the entire. It's oh, writing this down. Yeah, yeah. It, just type it in, like the PlayStation Demo Archive, right? And it has like you know, like because they they numbered the discs, so you know, Demo Forty Eight, and it was like Overboard yeah. and Hercules and, and and you know all of these like Monkey Hero and whatever. And I there was it was unlocking memories I didn't even know that I had, and I was like, this is, you know, like when you catch yourself feeling happy. And you go, yeah. right now, oh, so I'm in there. A special I'm feeling. A, I'm in a bath <laughs> watching these demos from yesteryear. And I was like, this was it. Because you're right. I used to play, so, there's some, like, there was a game called Overboard. I never actually owned it, but I played the demo all the way through to, to, to death. Like, you know, yeah. and uh, yeah. hard now. I, I, I mean, it, you know, demos are such a thing that, you know, that there's Easter eggs. I mean, if you look at um, Astro's Playroom yeah. that comes with a PS5, you yeah. know, there's, there's a, cool, a very the, the nice whole game is a whole really nice tribute to PlayStation history, but the good old demo disc gets a shout out. It really does well, in a big awesome, way, so in a big way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fantastic, and, and and another thing as well. It's nice to see a demo attached to something that isn't a, a really really timed event. Like obviously, Steam Next Fest is kind of like, and and I'm not exaggerating for for anyone that's kind of thinks that I'm using a bit of hyperbole here. The last Steam Next Fest had 2,100 demos, and it was like, okay, Hello. you've got five days, chop, chop. And Good like, luck. Ah, what do we do? You know? Yeah. So, this is nice. December 6th, it's a nice period. People are winding down for Christmas. You can play a bit of Cuddly Carnage or Ten Hearts, depending on, well, why not both? Yeah, I mean, speaking of Gory as well, like we're talking about demo discs. I think it was a, a Tony Hawk demo or SSX, can't remember. So, a demo for a boarding game. I think it was a Tony Hawk game. Uh, yeah. And again, just play that on loop on loop. I'll tell, tell you what you might be thinking of. It, I mean, I'm not trying to put a memory in your head that doesn't exist, but what it could be was the PlayStation 2's, the PlayStation 2 came with a demo disc and it had Airblade. Oh, I, I think it, that is it. it yeah, I think yeah, that is it. Yeah. yeah. And so many people I know have these memories. And I was actually at PAX East. We went to PAX East. 
And we were talking about Boston. It was Boston, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah. we went, didn't we? That's what I mean. We went to oh, we, did, we did an episode. Yeah, exactly. Episode. <laughs> but while we were there, uh, I was talking to somebody walking past, and they were like, "That looks like Airblade." And I ended up having a chat at the Wired booth with a complete stranger about the Airblade demo disc. Caught so yourself that, being happy again. <laughs> yeah, video games make me very happy. But but and nothing is happening in a free video game. So a demo, you can get a nice taste, and you just know yeah. what you're up to, don't you? So there we are. Yeah, great news. A flavor, a flavor. Yeah. yeah. All right, good. What else have we got going on this week? More games. More oh, game yeah. shake. So, um, so in, and, and this is something that we spoke about a couple of weeks ago as well. So, why the hiring? That's a, that's a given. We are hiring if you want to take your first step in the games industry. Yeah. Get on board. But one thing that we also announced at the same time was uh, a beta program where people can sign up to test out um, the beta builds of... Uh, upcoming wide games so play them early on give feedback um and, and so on and there's a there's a beta coming there's a beta up coming jake oh, believe yeah? it or not yeah and it's for uh tiny troopers uh go oh, um yeah. so this is one that if you want to I, this this is um this is really <laughs> this is a really interesting game so it's got a really interesting history oh, yeah. um was Highly successful, built a massive mobile audience as well yeah. way back in the day. Um, and now that a whole brand new iteration is coming. Um, and, and this is one that you definitely want to play. You can play on your own and have a lot of fun, but this is one that you can play as a family as well. Do you know, like if you're if you want player two to be your your child, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a good yeah. one to be like, yeah, you're yeah. doing stuff, and you're just like, Yeah, I'm doing all the stuff. <laughs> I'm, I'm carrying. <laughs> yeah, I'm carrying, I'm carrying, but you're totally doing it. Well done. Uh well done, son, daughter, uh, slash um, I guess significant other. Or or dog. Or dog. Yeah. Because uh yeah. interestingly, I don't know if you saw this hasn't made it into the news, but there is a games console that has been announced uh for dogs. <laughs> no, I but I did go to Asda recently, the same one that I bought God of War from, and I noticed that they had like wine for dogs for Christmas. Yeah. So what? dogs are do dogs are no, having no, the time of their life. Dog no, wine. Seriously, and dog I, I was about to make a joke about that, but uh <laughs> but no, I, at Christmas uh, our cats have poor secco. <laughs> this is what I'm on about. They're living it up. They got a console. <laughs> yeah. Getting trashed and playing console. the poor station. I five really hope whatever. it's. Uh, I hope. Uh, I really hope that the experience is just like a reverse Nintendogs. Yeah, <laughs> they get some more humans or something. Yeah. Um, but sorry, that's that's totally beside the point. But uh, the wide beta new one is coming. It's on the way for uh, Time Troopers. Get involved. Have an early play ahead of uh, ahead of launch, mm -hmm. and give feedback. Give feedback. Yeah, help shape the game. And then, and then once you've done doing that, if you think that you've got a bit of a knack for breaking down games, finding bugs, reporting issues, and so on. Apply for the QA role. Why not? Get involved. Take your first steps. Exactly, yeah. Learn a lot about yourself and some yeah. games. There's a lot of stuff going yeah. on. But I don't think that's it, is it? It is. Oh, okay. It is. It, no, no, it, it, it is. But, you know, as we mentioned, that we're going to take some time for questions a little bit later on. Oh, is that what it is? We were just going to remind people about the questions, was it? Yeah. Uh, right. yeah. Well, we don't, we, we've got an abundance, really. Christmas has come early. And we've got yeah. we've got quite a lot of questions. It's getting its own segment. We don't have it is. So it's look like we don't lucky we don't have the jingles anyway right now. Curtis is gonna yeah. I, I mean Curtis, I don't know what you're gonna do about this one. Maybe just play some like silence or out. something. Yeah, get the get the guitar out, Curtis. But yeah. we need the jingle for the questions, the Q and A sesh. But um more on that in a bit. Before we go to that though, why don't we bust this case wide open? Why don't we, why don't we take the internet at large? Why don't we take everything on while we look at what's going around the internet? I'm going to play the imaginary jingle in my head right now. Okay. And. <clears throat> no wait, stop from Google. From Google, Jake, from Google. And the wider internet. And other places. Thank you, uh, post production gods, for your jingleage. That was amazing. All right. So. Um, so smooth. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the internet uh, is a big old place. And despite the fact that we're recording this a little bit early because I've selfishly decided to move house, there are still some news stories that we can talk about. And some of them are, well, pretty interesting. So what have you got for me this week? Yeah, the first the first thing isn't even news. <laughs> it's not even news. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie, no, but no. it will be news eventually. Yeah, and this is something news. we'll talk about next oh, week. Yeah. So um, by the time we have an episode next week, um, the game awards will have happened. Yeah, they are going down on December eighth. Very exciting times. Mm -hmm. 
the Keelys are happening. Um, but I think I thought it might be good because we've had we've had an interesting, interesting, interesting. We've had an interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had an interesting. We've had an interesting track record. Uh, we've had an interesting track record <laughs> in the past uh, of predicting some things, right? Yeah. So I thought right. we might take another stab at it, and uh, I'm, I'm interested okay. to know what 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 you think. You know, one or two things that you think are going to happen and go down at the Game Awards. <coughs> Gosh, okay, right, I suppose, yeah, in my head at first I made the silly mistake of assuming that you wanted me to kind of predict maybe some award category wins, but of nah. course we should be looking at the fun stuff. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, so the awards are fun. The awards are fun. They're actually, I actually quite get a buzz off them, but yeah, uh, right, uh, unless Elden Ring doesn't win, in which case I never liked awards anyway. Okay, so I swear, guys. Uh, no, no, um, I, well, listen, I mean, let's say this. Uh, Jeff Keighley's good friends with Hideo Kojima Hideo Kojima uh, hasn't put a game out well I think it was four years ago Death Stranding it might have been three really? I, I, or it might have been 2019 but wow. yeah 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 it was oh you know what it was 2019 it was 2019 for sure um, but yeah it's been a while it's been a while. Then there's been ve- different iterations of it. They, you know, made like it came out on PC and then it came out with some more DLC and a cardboard mm-hmm. box and a trailer. But Hideo's always there at the Game Awards, like doing a little nod or a little wink. And I think he appeared at E3, actually. This, this, it was it was a, a Jeff Keighley show over E3 where he just kind of was like, hello, guys, it's me, Hideo. I'm doing a podcast. Uh, and also yes. I'm making a game for Xbox. Right. See you later. That was it. That was all he did. Mm. So I'm thinking, okay. But what are you really up to, Hideo? And I follow him on Twitter. And when he's not tweeting about, like, I don't know, Joy Division or whatever he's on about Arctic Monkeys, because he likes to tweet about Ed, literally music, sandwiches, and uh, movies, right? Yeah. Um, I was just going to say that there, there does seem to be... I don't know what the connection is between Japan and Joy Division. I don't either. What, but, what yeah. is that about? Now, I, I thought... So I've, I've had the pleasure. I've had the pleasure of working with... Um, Suda fifty one mm-hmm. uh, from yeah. Grasshopper, yeah, and he has he has like a big obsession with Joy Division. So yeah. much so that if you look at the the No More Heroes free t shirts and maybe some of the early logo art for it, yeah, it's it's a riff off uh, one of the Joy Division album art. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the famous, I guess, but, the famous like uh, like kind of mount, mountain scape made out of lines. Yeah, that's the one. Right, that's yeah. the one. But it's um. But I've noticed it across several Japanese developers as well. I'm like, yeah. what is the was, was Joy Division just like massive they, in they, Japan? At may, one maybe point? maybe like they they were one of the rare bands that went over there and toured, yeah. or they broke Japan, or may, maybe there's just something there. Universal Music, I don't know. Not bad for South. The BTS of their day. No, Joy yeah. Division. BT inverted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strange though, isn't it? But but, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, nonetheless, Hideo has been um, tweeting a lot of stuff recently about immersing himself in horror, and he's quite famously a bit of a wimp. Like he he kind of makes a bit of a joke about it. Yeah. Like he he's the creator of PT, arguably one of the scariest horror experiences ever, and yes. uh, was also famously sorry to do this, guys. But he was doing the Silent Hill game that never happened, um, and then there was a lot of talk about this and there was a, a whole studio called blue box studios it had been falsely um connected to oh, him and all yeah. of that sort of stuff but the, the the real thing is he's kind of said that he's working on a, a new project that's uh apparently is going to be a horror game and it has um oh, i can't remember one of the uh the stars of death stranding in it um the one who plays like the the Matt mickelson no she, she's the, like the one who has like the invisible ah. baby mama i think her name is I uh, can't remember what her name is, though. Is it... Uh, uh, she was in Bond. No, not her, the other one. No? No, not, not, not the main uh, like, oh my. starlet, but the other one. Uh, listen, this is, this is me trying Mar- to pick stuff out. I have not Mar- played Quale this. Mar- or Quale or whatever? Okay. Something like that. I, I, oh, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I know, I know exactly who you're on about. Um, but no... So anyway, she's apparently the lead in it, and it's going to be a horror thing. And and I'd love that. I'd love I'd love that. And and I think it'll be a really nice time. And you know what? It might be the start of something nice because uh, we've got um, we had the announcement of Dead Space. We have the Callisto Protocol out this week, and we've got more on that in a bit. And we've got Silent Hill news. We've got Resident Evil news, and it would be nice to see more AAA horror. So that's what my prediction would be we see a kojima thing and also i'm sorry it's quite boring one and i can keep this one to just literally one sentence 
hopefully we see that Elden Ring DLC announced it. It's almost definitely going to happen because, gosh, thing? I want it. Well, uh, I don't know. Like, data mine is data mined, and they were like, oh, there's like, they had a patch recently. Data mine and is going to data mine. Data mine is going to data mine. <laughs> and uh, so for anyone who doesn't know, data mining is when people um, kind of delve into the to, the to the detailed asset files inside the game's code and they can determine things. So for example, if Aaron was a video game character right now, he was wearing headphones, there'd be something called headphones. I don't know, PND file or whatever, right? Yeah. So anyway, when you go into the files uh, of, of Elden Ring's latest patch, it mentions DLC Hair 1 and DLC Hair 2. And also, okay. f- apart from Sekiro, which is kind of uh, 2019's uh, offering from, from From Software, every Soulsborne game has had DLC. So Elden Ring's surely going to have something in the works. And they normally come out That'd be cool. in quite quick succession. So uh, And the exciting thing for people who maybe aren't really um, evangelists is that the DLC is nearly always the icing on the cake. You want to talk to someone about Dark Souls 3? They're going to talk to you about the boss in the DLC. You want to talk to someone about Bloodborne? They're going to talk about Orphan of Cos. You've probably heard of Orphan of Cos if you've heard of Bloodborne. He's a yeah. DLC character. So the DLC is such high quality. Even Dark Souls 2, the one that people don't like as much, has DLC that really brought the whole game together. So I, I, I like the idea of that for the DLC. They just put you, um, they put you in control of a boss. And you just go through, you don't go through it, you're just in your arena and doing it from their perspective and just like, God, leave me alone. You just keep coming back. <laughs> it's like, come on. Well, come on, you know, on. there's actually, there was actually like, um, there was actually uh, cut content from the game that involved a sort of Coliseum-esque thing where you were doing sort of something like that. Not in mm. a boss capacity though. So uh, full oh, yeah, kudos yeah. to you if that goes right. Um, my guess about what the DLC will be like, it will be about, um, you know, you probably would have seen the iconography of, um melania she's like the um mm. the woman with the gold arm and she's the really difficult boss well she's yes. got a twin brother called Mikola, who's um asleep in an egg slumbering and a lot of elden rings cut content involves dreams and dream worlds and there's a lot of stuff like that in the mm. souls games so maybe we'll be looking a little bit at our, our sleepy little prince that's what i like, i like going into that painting in dark souls and it, it, exactly like dreams That'd be cool. Yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly yeah. that. So there we are. Um, that's my predictions. What have you got? Anything? Uh, Anything? Mine are... Uh, I'm going to start with a boring one. I think... I think a main sponsor of the show is going to be the Super Mario Brothers movie. That is a, a very, very sensible prediction. That's a very yeah. sensible prediction. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like I said, boring, but that that is simply just down to that um, this week, this week, uh, which hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> it's a shame. Yeah, actually, tonight from when we're recording, but um, yeah. there was a new Super Mario Brothers movie uh, trailer being shown, and I wonder if that is a bit of pre prep. And I think you know, um, Illumination have done some bits with the Game Awards in the past, maybe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I can see that being a, a through line. Now, for me, I hope. That that is not Nintendo's only offering. Um, mm. They've been known to show off Zelda trailers in the past at the Game Awards. This is a really big moment before Christmas, a chance to show a bit more and open things up. Um, but I also feel like that maybe if they are going to do anything, it will be, hey, everyone, um, here is an actual release date for Advance Wars now. I think it might be something of that level. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's that's. Yeah. Oh, I want to yeah. keep my. I want to keep my hope. I want. I want to keep myself in check. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, let's not fly off the handle yeah. like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze Two. You know, I mean, yeah. David Wise has been active on Twitter again recently, but I mean, that's not. You know, I think that's a David Wise. Yeah, yeah. he's on tour, isn't he, with Kev Bayless at the moment? He is. He, he certainly yeah. is. Yeah, Grant Kirkhope joined them last night. Uh, by, a, by a phone call yeah 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 <laughs> That's all that, yeah. yeah yeah heck yeah so yeah very very uh very very interesting uh prediction i was gonna say very very wise predictions then a freudian slip there um uh, mm. v- very very good predictions that um okay very sensible so i guess the next podcast for everybody listening will be episode 41 where the game awards will have happened but we would have recorded it in a pre- uh, game awards world so it'll be episode 42 where we have a deep dive into the offerings uh of jeff Keeley's extravaganza so keep an eye out in just a few weeks where we tackle the latest and greatest from uh that 
long, long, and very late if you're in a UK show. Right? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sounds good. Um, I, I know she didn't say Silent Hill though. No, no. I, you don't think? No, I don't think. think so. uh, I think Konami are like we've given it up now. They can suffer. They can starve. Yeah, they can wait. Let them wait. Yeah, exactly. Wait. Although look historically, at them, look Blue, at them salivating out there. But Blue, Blooper Team have had uh, announcements said before, haven't they? So you know, you never know. But yeah. uh, anyway, um, no, no. But but then also, I think uh, that the the counterpoint to that is you mentioned, you know, Kojima. Kojima. A bit yeah. awkward. I, I, like I going think, to a, that's like if, going to a party and a... your ex is there. Like you know, if yeah. if, if, if your your best mate. Is, is organizing a party hopefully they'll do you a solid so yeah. anyway uh unless you're a grown-up of course and it's all amicable uh yeah. one game that was announced at, at uh <laughs> one game was announced at uh, game wars a few years ago was the callisto protocol and not really again it's not really news in sense that we're breaking it to you but it's newsworthy as in you the listener slash watcher will be aware that this week there are some releases right I'm yeah wondering. yeah so out now at time of listening, not of recording, which is our issue. Because um, <laughs> last week we were like, yeah, we'll talk about it next week. We'll be playing it. It's coming. It's going to be great. Um, but, um, you know, you, you have life. So we're, we're not quite there yet. So we'll talk about that next week, I guess. But uh, the Callisto Protocol and Need for Speed Unbound yeah. are out now. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, interestingly, um, both this week just to bring some news into this yeah. um because i was going to be like oh what do you think of the callisto protocol jake and you'd be like oh, it's, yeah it's great um in but, theory um but both of them were subject to having uh footage leaked early ahead of time ah uh, yeah um due to pre-release copies being out in the wild and that is what it is um and th- i've noticed this has become a bit of an issue recently right where for example before i went away for my month off um, I think it was like five days before the official launch, I had uh, Mario Rabbids Spark of Hope drop through my letterbox. And I was like, oh my God, this is great. And then I was like, oh no, I'm going away, so I can't play it. But it's, it's. I, I'm not really sure what's going on out there. Uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 I suspect it's probably to do with my, my, my real genuine prediction, for those that don't know... Um... It's not a pre-release copy in the sense that, you know, a journalist has leaked it. But yeah, you're mm. referring to the fact that, r- that when you buy a game online, it's delivered early. So um, I don't want to say the website in case I, I get them into trouble, but there's a very reputable website online. It's a, an independent uh, games mm-hmm. website in the UK that I often buy games from because I can almost Indeed. guarantee they arrive early. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And, yeah, uh, yeah, I know you know. And, and so and what, what, I, what I think is that... Um, well, I'm moving house. This is sorry that this is boring everybody, but I promise I'm it's gonna be a point. I bought a new duvet, some like little house bits, you know, off you know, Denelm or Wilk or whatever. And they, I, they arrived before launch date. They didn't. They haven't arrived, what? actually. Funnily <laughs> enough, they have n- none of them have arrived and I move house tomorrow, right? Oh no. But the point is, it's because of the Christmas like Black Friday sale holdup. So I wonder if a lot of these things arriving early was because Black Friday and Cyber Monday and whatever, and the Christmas shoppers were about to do their thing. Yeah. And so the courier services would be busy and everything like that. So to anticipate and get ahead of these delays, all of these uh, people sending out games have just gone, send it out early and it'll probably be delayed. But the cogs kept turning and they arrived early. That's what I think. I think it was kind of a preemptive early send to try and even out the delays that we're seeing because of the Christmas period yeah. and the Black and Black Friday because these were all around Black Friday. That's my like prediction, but that's complete punditry from me. I've got no basis in there. If you're a Royal Mail officer or you work for a big courier and you want to email in some, uh, you know, corrections, it's unplugged at wideproductions.com. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, where, where, I, do you, where, where do you sit? Where do you sit on this though? So let's say, mm-hmm. let's say. Let's use my example, right? Yep. I got Mario, Mario Rabbit's Sparks of Hope early. Yeah. Now, if I posted, um, if I posted a video, mm. let's say I post nothing spoilery, but it's just hey, I'm playing the game. Not that I do that. Um, yeah. Now, what is the stance for that? If it's a legally obtained game, um, you know, yeah, who, who truly fires the starting pistol? You know, does does is content then subject to be taken down? Um, that's well, it's that's, interesting. That's that's a difficulty. So I, I, I and especially with these bigger games, right? I think there can be people out there that aren't 
probably trying to cause a stir, but they're like, oh my God, I, I got it early and this is amazing. I've been waiting I, yeah, eight months. So, well, in my day job, I have been subject to a lot of very awkward conversations about this where, oh, you know, yeah. there's a supposed embargo being broken by uh, somebody mm -hmm. putting it on YouTube. And I say, I didn't send this tiny YouTube channel with 40 followers of this game. Of course I didn't. And then yeah. suddenly I do have the really big reputable YouTuber saying, um, excuse me, there's lots of footage online of this game. So yeah. do I go live now or what? Am I being punished by, um, yeah. by not, you know, and it's a very hard situation to manage. But I mean, I, I remember the first time I ever saw this happen. I can actually tell you my, vividly the first time I ever saw this happen. I remember, I remember Fable 2. A man uploaded four days before launch the entire yep. intro on YouTube, which is really brand new at the time, 2006 or whatever. And Shout out to Peter Molyneux back on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, and uh, yeah, it's uh, Fable 2. It's the first time I ever saw a, a leak or anything like this. And it really ruined it for me because I couldn't, because <laughs> of my own fault, my own lack of restraint. I couldn't stop watching it. I was like, you know, 13 or 14 or whatever. And yeah. I was like, this sucks, but I can't stop. Uh, and, uh, you know, it kind it's of... a dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, my stance on it is like, what can you do about it? And and But listen, you have to be there. You have to experience that thrill. I remember, you know, me, me and you work in the games industry. So to try and have a semblance of relatability, we're not going to pretend that we get games well early and stuff. But when you do, as a paying customer, buy a game and it comes early. Like uh, I got Destiny 2 a week one week before launch what the heck is that how do you even make that mistake yeah. a week early as a paying customer servers were online and everything because of the review copies oh so uh yeah i don't i i really i really think when you've experienced that thrill you'll understand the joys of it and uh until then <laughs> don't <enjoy. laughs> yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you're just an innocent bystander in all this aren't you you can't yeah, help it no, mario rabbit's got through your door yeah, yeah but the thing is the thing is because i I remember it came and I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. Um, but then I just pictured Davide Soliani's face just being like, I've worked very hard on this, Aaron. <laughs> like, but in Italian, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Worked very hard on this. Yeah. The Rabbits team have worked very hard on this. Don't destroy my life. I I'm think like, that's, okay, I, I think Davide that's Soliani. Maybe the safest thing to say then, maybe my, you know, the safest rule to follow is kind of treat it like a new film. Like, yeah, not everyone's going to see it on day one. Doesn't mean you should post spoilers though, does it? Don't be no. like, you know, and, and that can get a little bit annoying. You know, I remember yeah. seeing some people posting spoilers about, uh, what, I can't remember what it was that leaked. Oh, it might, it might have even been Callisto Protocol. <gasps> and they said something and I was like, oh, darn. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, so, so yeah, some, some cool games out this week. Um, there's also, I'll tell you what I'm interested in as well, which it, it's, it, 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 might, it might, it might have gone, um, it might have gone, uh, under the radar because it's kind of had one of these staggered launches because if you bought the game, if you paid for the game, you could play it from November the 19th. But if you didn't buy the game, you have to wait for the game to come out on Game Pass, day one. Uh, it's that Warhammer Dark Tide, which is the like Left 4 Dead. I have seen a lot of cool stuff about this, actually. Um, I don't know what Twitter hole i live in but i'm, I'm seeing it every day and there's people being like oh this is so great well um, yeah uh, did you play vermintide the one before yes well there we go but but i think a lot of that is it's quite melee isn't it it's fantasy so you were axes yeah. and swords and maybe bows and spells but this one is very shooty shooty mm. and uh oh gosh it looks like so polished and lovely doesn't it and yeah yeah game pass day one so, so do you know what i fancy a bit of that as well so i'll be jumping on Callisto protocol and i'll be jumping on that on my week off i think yeah if i can that get out of the great. boxes yeah. i'm packing too <laughs> yeah <laughs> Right. we've got more we've got more and uh, this one this one i've put in for you and it's gonna come up a tiny bit later in the question as well okay um okay so we all know that the witcher the original witcher is getting a brand new remake and the team have announced that it's a reimagining it's a reimagining reimagining of a classic of the classic tale the classic game um and one thing that they have confirmed is that it is going to be pure open world. Oh, um, okay. Like yeah. in, in total, because even Witcher 3 isn't full open world. Do you know what I mean? Like you still have your islands that you travel to. And yeah, so there's on, right? still instances, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. I just want to say how, how, how you thought about this. What, what do you think? Like, um, I, I think it's, personally, I think it's interesting. Again, I think we'll talk about this mm. in a little bit. And we spoke a bit about it last week as well. Um, but it's, it's, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because I think everyone that has fallen in love with The Witcher through, let's say, The Witcher 3, because I think that was the one that really 
took like hold of everyone, right? Attention, the kind of thing, yeah. Exactly, um, and and that was because it, it they they made the game more accessible than two and one. Yeah. Um, for good or bad, depends on who you are, where you join the journey. Um, but I do think that, you know, the original Witcher game was, is of its time, and I think it has this whole new audience now. So to be able to refresh, yeah, everything I think is uh, a cool. Yeah. Cool way to do things. Yeah, I, I, you know, when you hear about like game remakes and you kind of go, oh, who's it for? This is like the perfect example of an opportunity to remake something because a lot of people know The Witcher. A lot of people don't know The Witcher because of The Witcher 1. Realistically, how many people know The Witcher because of The Witcher 1 as yeah. a percentage? It's like a book, it's like a Witcher book reader. But you know what? That's there's more of the thing of that. Some mm. people go, I like The Witcher 3. I'll read the books. Well, I like the Witcher Netflix show. I'll read the books. Yeah, some people being like, I'm going to learn the native language so I can read the original versions of the book. It's the like, OG, okay. Because apparently quite yeah. a lot has been lost in, in translation yeah. between Polish and, and English. Yeah. I, I played the Witcher one on a Nokia N-Gage. Uh, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. Uh, yeah. They, I think it had been, I don't know if it had been modded out or something like that. In, in a biology class in my high school, I had this guy who was really obsessed with the Witcher. He was like, it's better than Oblivion. And I was like, no, it's not. Shut up. He was banging on about it. anyway. I forgot about it. like the, the guy is like you know. I caught up with him about two years ago when I I yeah. said, "Do you remember playing The Witcher together in biology class?" I failed high school, guys. Sorry about that, everybody. But <laughs> um, but but now I'm talking about The Witcher on a podcast, so everything's okay again. Stay in school, yeah. etc. Um, but 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 um, <laughs> but yeah. And then I said, "Did you expect it to blow up like this?" And he was like, "Honestly, I thought something would happen when I saw Game of Thrones started taking off. I thought maybe there's hope." And then Witcher 3 happened and stuff. So The Witcher 1 has all of the characters that you know from The Witcher 3 in it pretty much, apart from like the Wild Hunt. But uh, yeah, a lot of people will go. And, and you know, it's like uh, like most things in it. Like We'll talk about it a little bit later. But I think it's great. I think it being fully open world. And I quite like The Witcher 3's instant base. It, it, do you know what I like about it? It gives me like lots of nice opportunities to mop up. The first, the first island. I'll do all that before yeah. I move on to the next. It helps me like contain things in my my head a little bit. Whereas Elden Ring, I might have forgotten a little cave there. Then I get swept away. So is it going to be like Elden Ring open world, open world, or is it going to be like I don't know? I don't, I don't know. I hope I hope it can just take from that 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 school of open world, like the three examples I suppose of the modern open world that's done it really well. I guess critically, you'd say is Breath of the Wild, yep. Ghost of Tsushima, and Elden Ring. Because Zelda Blade Chronicles three and, and Zelda Blade Chronicles three. Uh, uh, technically, sorry, sorry, that is still instance in instance. some regards, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> open field system. Yeah, I mean, that's what they always say, right? Um, so yeah, I I love the idea of this, and and I think that um, I, I think the good thing for this is that you know for for the hardcore fans as well, what this gives is a reinterpretation of the world as well in terms of how they're going to have to build it and yeah. pull it all together and make it more magical and so on. Yeah. Um, so I think everyone, I think everyone wins. Yeah, on this one. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I reckon so. I think it's very very hard to find fault with with this, uh, especially because it's been so long. So yeah, that's really really yeah. interesting. Mm. Right. It's quite interesting. And uh, just just to add on this while we're here is uh, CD Projects have also said that just due to the enormous success that they've had with uh, Cyberpunk Edge Runners on Netflix, mm. they're going to be looking to do more of that moving forward. Uh, which yeah. I, which I, which I think is very cool because um, you know obviously there is the Witcher TV show but that is not necessarily taking the game it's taking the, the books and so on and now the Witcher Netflix is coming into the Witcher three <laughs> by DLC right there's um, yeah yeah it is yeah, yeah content themed on the TV show coming into the Witcher three um, so it's, it's it's very interesting. I, I wonder what else they'll do there if they'll go the the anime route with The Witcher, maybe. Yeah, Who knows? they had like I watched the animated one uh, that was like a young Vesemir. Uh, is it called? Oh yeah, yeah I I, I like, didn't see that. It was like it was like, it was like a one off thing. That was that was yeah. quite good, and that that good. looked yeah yeah. It reminded me of like the the Netflix Castlevania type type oh, thing. I you know, love the Castlevania. I, show. I, so yeah, season two of that spot on but um yeah, yeah I, I guess i guess we have to mention it because just because i feel like we're doing everybody the service if we don't um just so we can say that we're aware and then just say nothing about it uh yeah. if you'd like to tweet your thoughts about liam hemsworth replacing henry cavill in the witcher <laughs> on netflix you can tweet us at wired unplugged and uh i all i'll say is i was sent a picture of liam hemsworth as Geralt, 
and I yeah. thought someone was. Fo- I thought a fan had photoshopped it. Okay. Oh, it's real. Hmm? A real picture of him as Geralt. Yeah. Well, Unless it is a fan photoshop, but I don't think it is. Yeah. I, he wouldn't be filming yet, right? I don't know if it was like maybe he had to like audition for it uh, with a little wig on. I don't know. I think they'll go. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> Do you think they'll go the uh, the Doctor Who route? Geralt has like mutates. Like, he, he has, he yeah, has a he potion slightly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like he he drinks one of his potions and then something goes wrong and is slightly stuck. something goes wrong. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if something goes wrong, something goes right. It depends who you it, like. Ex- that that um, is exactly <laughs> it. Yeah, that's exactly it. So yeah, so shout out to Liam Hemsworth. If you want to come on the show and explain yourself, you can you can do it. <laughs> explain yourself. Yeah. No, <laughs> I think I think the world is just besotted of Henry Cavill as Geralt, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm interested to see how the show continues because actually, you mentioned the Wild Hunt. Um, the, the video game gets taken and ingested in some Netflix content. Well, the show is obviously heading towards that climactic it's, finale. One yeah, they've, they've the already time. mentioned the wild hunt in the show, yeah. and yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so I'm 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 interested in seeing that show out. Actually, no matter what, I'm going to stick to the end and see, and hopefully it, it all goes smoothly. So, yeah. So, shout yeah. out to CD Project, like uh, the the Wit the Witcher PS5 uh, upgrades, and then, sorry, not just PS5. I've, it's because I've got one. The yeah. the the upgrade with, with the ray tracing and 4K and all of that. I've been waiting for that. That was originally promised uh, two good. years ago. Uh, but it's, it was delayed just so they could kind of iron out all of the creases with, um, the, quite frankly, very creased c- cyberpunk, which they've done a great job on. Mm-hmm. And now they're able to put things into this and it's coming out for free, like in a couple of weeks. So yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm proper looking forward to dipping into that over Christmas. Yeah, mm. I bet you are. I bet you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll take you back. It'll take you back. Exactly. Nice. Right, good. So yeah, what um, else have we got going on in the news? So The Witch was for you and something that's in there for me is... Yeah. There's someone I'm going to mention that a lot of people probably aren't going to know, but I, I think he's a legend. Yeah. Uh, so there's a guy. Uh, his name's uh, uh, Takaya Imamura. Oh, yeah. Um, and he uh, is an ex-employee of Nintendo Japan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he worked as a designer on Star Fox, F-Zero. Um, he's got something fanciful, though, because he did the design for Tingle. Uh, from Zelda, <laughs> specifically he, Majora's Mask. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he also did that spooky, spooky moon on Majora's yeah. Mask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but a legend, a legend. We follow each other on Twitter now. It's very exciting. Aww. He doesn't know what I say. But uh, <laughs> it's like, yeah, good luck. Um, but essentially, he, he left Nintendo. Um, and, you know, as a designer, one of the things he likes to do is he, he loves to draw. He loves to draw. Mm. Um, and he has created a, a brand new manga. Yeah. called omega six and he's currently on tour in france now omega six for some reason right. i don't know yeah. and maybe it's just because of the size of the manga audience but at the moment you can only buy it in french which would also you know yeah. kind of explain why he's currently in france right now doing a tour for it <laughs> yeah um, is that what the f stands for an f zero yeah uh, maybe yeah french <laughs> zero <laughs> french zero um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, he's in France at the moment. But during uh, he had a panel at one of the shows he was at, and he he announced he's like, obviously I'm, I'm making manga, but I'm also turning into a game for Nintendo Switch, oh. uh, which is amazing. So I, I yeah. definitely definitely have a look at this because his designs are iconic, legendary. He's got a very distinct style. Yeah. Um, obviously, his manga involves bounty hunters because why not? Um, yeah. But the the game that's coming to Switch is going to be. Uh, an almost text-based adventure, but with battle scenes as well. Oh, that's nice. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's you know similar to the manga. It's it's almost let's say an interactive version of picking up a manga, but you know a bit choose your own adventure at the same time. Um, do you do you remember Big, the film Big with Tom Hanks? Yeah, yeah, I know it. Yeah, and, and he designs that product, and it's like, oh yeah, you know, people spend X amount of cents on comic books every week, but what if you can make them interactive? And it's like, yeah. you can go, sorry, I don't have to explain this, but it's basically that as a game. And I'm not saying it's a brand new thing or anything, but I think this guy is an absolute design legend. I love everything that he's ever given yeah. to my childhood uh, through the stuff that he has done. Yeah. And shout out to uh, our Japanese friend for you know leaving nintendo and just following his other onward passions i think i think that's very respectable and uh i salute him yeah there we go and you know uh the only thing i knew him for apart from uh his work on on star fox adventures on the gamecube was that he is the guy responsible for yes tingle yes the moon but also i just googled the double check as well he is the guy behind the iconic majora's mask 
He designed it. Ah. He designed the mask itself. Yes. Right. As well as lots of other objects in like Link, Link's Awakening. He did loads of the, the vase designs and the now iconic yeah. chicken design. So there we go. So art. Oh, there you what are. I thought I'd add a little guy. bit of a sprinkle for you now. Yeah. 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 Really? I love it. I love it. See, I, I'm glad you went down the rabbit hole because I could have spoke about this for a long time <laughs> and gone very nitty gritty. But I was like, I'll respect yeah, the a, people. The Majora's was... Mask guy. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> the Majora's oh. Mask guy. Yeah. What a legend. Um, and that is it. That is that is all we have for the news. But we have questions. We finally have questions oh to round out gosh. the show. Okay. Um, and we have no jingle for this, so I think we should just slip on into it, right? Yeah. Okay. Unless yeah. you want to just you want to beatbox and we'll. No, like, no, nah. not, not right now. Maybe maybe we can cook something up for the for the weeks ahead. But in the meantime, we, we'll, we'll just do it as like a nice a little a little treat for everybody listening. So for the real yeah. heads and listen, if you're listening this this far, it means you're one of the good ones, all right? So why don't you get involved as well and you can help shape the podcast. Uh, with your questions you can email us at unplugged at wiredproductions.com you can tweet us at wired p p for productions or podcast and at wired unplugged which is like our official twitter at where a lot of these questions have come from to be fair in fact all of yeah. them have come from twitter we haven't had all an email yet so it shows a bit so of it's... class writing an email normally you only yeah. email like when your wilco order has been cancelled or you know yeah something weird like that but you can do that too yeah should we should we should we, should we go in yep all right what have we got Okay, so, oh, where do we start? Where do we start? Where do we start? Okay, um, let's start from the top. Okay, All so right. uh, from DK Chrissy on Twitter, um, who I believe is also a mod for Wired in the Discord as well. Oh right, uh, in the trenches doing some good stuff in Discord. Yeah, I think um, also from North Wales, which is where I'm from. So come round, Beath, to you. There you go. Okay, yeah, I understood. Yeah, and uh, Wales forever. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> yeah, yeah, also from North Wales, a North, a North Wales native, so that's lovely. First episode with subtitles. Um, <laughs> sorry, uh, I think Welsh is a beautiful language, by the way. Thank you very much. Dude. Um, yeah. if you could have any remakes, what would you choose? Well, you know, um, my my answer, my, my, my truthful and honest answer is kind of kind of in the works, so I can't really talk about it. And it's not Silent Hill, too, believe it or not. If I could have get a solid remake for anything, I would have asked for a remake of Fable. Again, shout out to Peter Molyneux. But it's, it's true. And that's that's being reimagined, reset, redone, revamped. Is it, is it, is it currently down as Fable 4? Oh, is it? Has it got the 4 after it? Oh, no. Oh, I, oh has it? I think, I don't know. I can't remember. I kind of thought. Either I, way, it doesn't matter, it, right? Like, I, I don't think it's it's yeah, going no. to matter in the grand scheme of things. It's, it's just called Fable. Just Fable. It's, it's just, just Fable. Fable. Okay. And it's the Playground Games one for those that don't know. Yeah. And, anyone that, and anyone that doesn't really understand what I'm on about, Fable's one of the first games that ever had the kind of. I don't really know how to describe it. Certainly one of the most mainstream games to have, like, what I call, like, the incremental uh, player choice system. Hmm. So a lot of RPGs, and I love RPGs, a lot of them, you kind of pick who you are at the very beginning by putting some numbers next to some stats, charisma 10, strength 9, intelligence 4, or whatever. So yeah. like, but, you know, Fable's one of the first games where, you know, if you want to get stronger, you hit people more. If you want to get better at running, you run more. And yeah. if you do evil things, you're going to start looking scaly and evil. Grow horns. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it had, and it had this great British sense of humour as well, right? It had the, the really great regional accents. Loads of people from the Midlands and Wales. And yeah, yeah. they had a lot of these folksy yeah, accents, yeah. you know. Um, and uh, just something magical about it. Unfortunately, the studio was kind of scattered to the winds when EA bought it and the studio kind of was defunct. And... And they went everywhere. There's some of the developers uh, went on to Playground Games, which is where they are. Some went on to develop, uh, well, a bit close to home here. We got the likes of Tin Hearts, actually, is from yeah. X Fable Pets Pedigree. Rogue Sun. There we yeah. go. Uh, Kin Seed, which which just launched recently, is by a couple of the level designers of the original Fable. Um, so I'm always. Oh, and interestingly, that. interestingly, there was a there was a guy. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy. His name's Ted Timmins. Yeah. Uh, Ted Timmins, really wonderful guy. Met him a very very long time ago. Um, he worked on Fable um, through the ages, mm -hmm. uh, and he now works. Um, he's now working on Call of Duty. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. He's worked on some. Yeah. It, honestly, I followed his career with like just fascinating interest. You know, from going from yeah. uh, Lionhead and Fable for Life to watching his journey, just saying, "Yeah, okay, I'm going to go to Canada now. Okay, now I'm going to go." And work on 
the yeah. Call of Duty. What happens if you um, just keep saying Warzone yes to things? Team, but... <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Exactly. Go, go for it, man. So, so you know yeah. what? I would have said Fable, but because that's kind of on the way, uh, you know. Um, I also would have said Tenchi, but Sekiro was the Tenchi. spiritual successor. Yeah. So I, I didn't really want to go down that route. So uh, just on uh, uh-huh. just on Fable, though, I think mm-hmm. the next one. Yeah. The only demand that I have for that game. Yeah. Uh, because let's be honest, it's playground, so it's going to look and be incredible. Uh, but um, Zoe Wanamaker has to come back. Has to come back. That is mm. iconic, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I, I do you know what my answer would would be? Um, you know what? It would it would have to be it. You know, the original Metal Gear Solid. I don't think it would have. I don't think it would really be able to get. You know, maybe if if like uh, Blue Point Studios did it, like they did with Demon Souls and Shadow of the Colossus. You'd have to be very careful with that. But which one would you do? <coughs> I'd go for you... Metal Gear Solid. So, not Metal Gear, uh, not not Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid. One. Oh, no, oh no, no. I mean, like, would you go for the the Twin Snakes version that you do again, or no? I'd I'd go for the original one, yeah, because it just change quite put your own a bit. spin on it. Yeah, that's that's yeah, I that's what I'd be go awesome, for. you know. It'd be very very scary though with yeah. Kojima around, you know. But uh, like. I don't know how you do it, but I'd I'd love a bit of that to be honest, and I, and I really hope that that we see that because I don't think enough people understand the power of Metal Gear Solid. Um, so yeah, uh, great, and that's what I picked. What about you? I have. I, you have to be careful what you wish for. I think, and I think oh, we yeah. spoke about this last week that you know, um, uh, when we were talking about uh, Legacy of King, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, we did, yeah. Um, and you know. Do do you want a remake or do you just want a uh, a new entry? If it's a follow on or mm. if it's just a new entry, similar to what God of War did, where it's like we're just doing God of War, we're carrying on, yeah. things exist, and we're just making a new experience. I, I think you have to be careful what you wish for on the remake front because you know we've seen it, we've seen it very recently that remakes don't always turn out the way they should. I mean, you know, you can look at some high profile like the GTA trilogy uh remakes yeah. and what happened there um and there's been some other games that i've got remakes as well that haven't turned out as good and it kind of sullies the mm. memory yeah um yeah you that's right you know yeah yeah I, I think if if i was gonna say a remake of a game i'd go for one or two things it would either be again the lost vikings mm. a new entry in that or um i would i would take mm-hmm. a remake of columns no um <laughs> i'll take a remake of um i would take a remake of star fox adventures that is a great choice and you know what yeah i i co-sign it yeah right, i co-sign that yeah come on yeah what a what a game on that was underrated as heck like overlooked yeah. you know visionary game that anyway yeah. so right great yeah and thank you very much for the question that was that was a good one that yeah we've got more okay got more. Are you right. ready yeah so next one is from uh at odd underscore artist on twitter and this is yeah. specifically for you jake it says for jake oh uh gosh. would How you, you rather have yeah no no i should deliver did I, did this I tell you that somebody actually asked me that <clears throat> once at a panel no it was in a funny it was in a serious way because I'm, I'm a parent and, yeah, and yeah. i also play games and they were they were saying how do you sleep at night because like you know yeah, you're yeah, staying yeah. up playing games. But can you, can Actually, you, how? Yeah, yeah. But can you imagine being on a panel halfway around the world and someone says, "I've got a question specifically for you, Jake. How do you sleep, do at, you night? sleep at night?" I was like, "Who have I upset?" What? Anyway, yes. Yeah, so what's the real question? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah that, <laughs> that's the question you'd ask. Yeah, yeah. 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 All right, go on. Um, okay. Would you rather have one perfect, flawless, ten out of ten silent? hill game that has no replay value at all <laughs> um or yearly uh annual middling six out of ten games <laughs> that's really good so look i am um... <laughs> that's really good that's a very targeted question i think that no amount of security is worth the suffering of uh, a mediocre life chained to a routine I don't think I don't think I'd like to be on a hamster wheel playing games that I don't really care about that much and watch my love for Silent Hill slowly die and get myself frustrated by going that could have been great if eh, that could have been great if I'd rather it be great one time and then me just go that's it nothing else yeah that was a good question that 
Uh, I think one perfect good. one, one nice memory, and then I can remember it then and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Replay value yeah. is a state of mind as well, because if I miss it that much, I know that I'll come back. You know. Yeah, I mean, I, I do. Um, you know, there are people out there that will make it their thing to play Final Fantasy VII every year, um, or right. you know, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. There, there, there are games that people do go back to, like you know, like I said on the last episode, like. It wasn't too long ago that I played Eternal Darkness again, and that's not. It, uh, no, you know, you, yeah. you can say it's got replay value, but it's not. It's not good replay value. <laughs> yeah. It's quite, you know. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's what I mean. But yeah, but like I say, it's a state of mind. If you miss it, you go. You know what? Even though I would have. Yeah. So so yeah. I'd, I'd, but let's imagine that it was like the question was even worse, sicker. And it was like you could only play it once ever in your life, and then it's destroyed forever. I'd still rather the ten out of ten actually. I'd yeah. still rather 10 out of 10. Um, yeah, because you had that experience, right? It's like, that will live with me. Yeah. One PT. <laughs> you know, that's all you need. Yeah. So, uh, although that did have replay value and people are still playing it 10 years on. So here we go. Uh, yeah, great, great question. Thank you very much. Old underscore artist. I think, I think we've got time for one more. I think we've okay. got time for one more, right? Okay. Um, and so... I'm gonna I'm gonna say this now because I think we'll tackle this next week. So it'll be good to get it'll be good to get the opinion of the the wider team on this and see if we can get some of them on. Just because it's a bit of a it's a tough question to answer, uh, and it was a question from uh, Sora Raven on okay. Twitter. Yeah. And the question was, uh, what undeveloped game idea do you regret not finishing or publishing, uh, either due to the pandemic, lack of interest, mm -hmm. resources, or people power? to wow. pull it off and i think you know what, actually let's just answer it why not um but no i'm not going to answer it but we'll bring it back next week but yeah. um you know when we mentioned recently we've been looking through games for the future the future right and, and looking at what the team likes what we think we can work on and so on and you know that that happens all the time you get games that come through and you think wow uh, this is good, but you you know when you look at these things, you sign things to say we're going to keep quiet about those things. So there are some things that we can't mention, um, and there are games that you know uh, that I've certainly looked at along with the gang at Wired um, that are interesting, and they have gone on to be incredibly successful and make moments in history, um, yeah. and become special games for everyone that I think everyone recognized the interest was there. But I think a part of it comes down to, you know, let's say if we just went back in time and said, oh yeah, we'll take that title. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, some people, some people are the right fit for games. Do you know what I mean? Some people have, that's very, very um, true. some well. people yeah. can bring together certain games in different ways that others can't. Yeah. Um, so it's always, it's uh, the one thing, no, I'll save I'll save it for next week. I'll save it for next week because there is one thing. Uh, there was a game that me and Leo were talking about a while ago, <laughs> ago which I'm gutted hasn't happened. Um, yeah, but we'll, we'll save that for next week. Yeah, um, honestly, yeah, it, it's interesting. I watch um, a lot of Dragons Den and Shark Tank mm. and whatever, and I yeah. love it when they talk about the ideas that got away that have been super successful. Because at the end of the day, no one's rooting for failure. You know, it, yeah. if, if you're that it, it will like turn something down wants to be proven wrong i want yeah. to you know so so yeah i can't wait to uh to explore that with you uh a little yeah. bit more next week so okay then okay so the question that we will ask is from at deals on okay. twitter all right okay. um who would be on your mount rushmore uh if it came to video game characters who would you have on there oh, it's a hard one it's a hard one for me because it's so is... easy to go traditional but yeah. i feel like that's so cliche and boring yeah um i don't like i don't know how many people is on mount rushmore's face i'm really sorry everybody that i don't know that in advance i know that that's gonna annoy people is it five faces five yeah five well, it depends if you're watching richie rich as well because you know obviously let's assume i'm not richie rich's dad has uh all right a face on well let's anyway. assume <laughs> uh, no, no, yeah no I, I, let's assume that i wasn't watching richie rich uh, yeah. i don't know like, I, like look. Let, 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 let's say let's uh let's say well, Let's say fa five. Five sort of iconic characters, basically, yeah. isn't it? Uh, I put, should, we, should we build this between us? Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'll go. I'll go first, and uh, yeah. you you decide if it if it's getting room one hundred one or living. All right. Yeah. Zero suit Samus Aran. 
from the Metroid series? So, I would say Samus deserves a spot, but would it be Zero Suit or Sar- in terms of being able to make out the rocky face? Ah, true. We're going to have this we're issue. Gonna have to, we're going to have to have Helmet yeah. Samus. Helmet right. Samus. Fine. All right, then. I just thought Helmet that would be... Samus. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, Samus. I think Samus deserves a spot. Okay. Then, yeah. then Okay, there we are. Right? One down. Um, I am going to say Croc. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Right? You know, I was telling a story this week to somebody about my first PlayStation game, and it was Croc Legend of the Gobbos. So I'm on. Great game. I'm on board for it's important to me. I still have my copy of that. I love Croc Legend Beautiful. of the Gobbos. For anyone that doesn't know, Croc was a bit of like a, you know, a, a wannabe icon, a wannabe mascot, a Sonic of Mario, you know, that never really yeah. made it. But he touched the hearts of the, you know, 25 people that bought the game. And uh, two of them are right here. So the, the Croc Support Club are standing out. Yeah. Much like the shoes that have come back into fashion. We hope one day there'll be a Croc resurgence. And I stand by that. You never know. Um. So, I mean, icon- iconic video game characters apart from that. Um. Well... Look, I mean, do you know what it is as well? Like, you're quite biased, to be completely honest. So I'll say it so you don't have to, because no one will believe you. But they'll believe me because they know that I'm... It's like me talking about Silent Hill. No one's going to believe yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So you would just say Nintendo characters, and I'll be like, oh. But the truth is, you're right. Nintendo characters are the most iconic, aren't they? Mario is iconic. Zelda, well, Link is iconic. Zelda's pretty yeah. iconic, to be fair. Donkey Kong, iconic. Like, they oh, just God. make hits. Who have we got on a PlayStation? I, I don't know. Kratos, Nathan Drake. No, you'd put you'd put Lara Croft on, wouldn't you? Nathan Drake is just Lara Croft with an attitude problem <laughs> and stubble. <laughs> so I I I think um I don't know, man. To be honest, I I'd put like Sephiroth's pretty iconic. Yes, like an iconic villain. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got Sephiroth. We've got Samus. We got yeah. uh who else have we got? Who's after uh, Croc? Croc. That's a that's a good one. That um, Dracula. Castlevania Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right. That's sick. That sound that. We've got one more. Uh, all right. We've got one more. Okay. Okay. Let, let's take someone. Let's take someone modern. Someone that has come around that is modern that deserves okay. to be remembered as a classic and go down in history. A future classic. Yeah. The cat from Stray. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not no uh, who, who who would be uh, do you know what i would like oh no i can't say that because it's another final fantasy reference i was just gonna say just a chocobo that's iconic That'd but be cool. that was cool isn't it yeah, yeah. or but, a moogle um yeah like something like that um yeah. what what is an iconic character i'm just in my head now i've started thinking of cosplayers but it's kind yeah. of like uh it's quite a difficult question this to be honest it's sick though it is a sick question but it's yeah. sick because it's difficult. I don't really know any modern classes. The only person I can think of who like the the you know there's is it's like Aloy from Horizon, isn't it? What about what about a tarnished? No, too generic, isn't it? You can't I think. Yeah, but you yeah. can't. Out, that's the thing about it, you know. I think I think that who do they push? They push Aloy and Kratos. There's that fella from Gears of War. Do you know what? Master Sack Boy. Sack, no, but Master Chief took him on there. Uh, but he's got, he's we've got already got Samus. Samus. Yeah. Gosh. This is tough. Yeah. This is tough. Yeah, it is. It is tough, you know. But we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it. Tembo. Tembo, the badass elephant. Tembo. All right. Yeah. I was thinking of Tombo, like Tembo? the pink haired, like, uh, <laughs> you know, pig eater. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah Tomba yeah. or whatever. Tombi, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Tombi. Damn. Um, what? Well, anyway, so there we go. That that is a very difficult question because, like, you know, if I was after, if I had to think, like. I don't know what it is like uh, objectively, and I have to think of like the iconic ones. I guess you'd go, you'd probably go one of each, wouldn't you? You'd go Nintendo, Sega. So I, I'd I'd say it would be like Master Chief, Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Mario, uh, Crash Bandicoot, and I don't know, like the spy from flipping Team Fortress, <laughs> or something like that. You know, yeah. just a, just a gun from Counter Strike. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I, you know what? You, I, on the Mount Rushmore, you'd go for some annoying, like I don't know who are modern characters. Thinking of cosplayers, it'd be like Diva from Overwatch or something. Some yeah. or some League character. Yeah, I was what? just gonna say maybe someone from Overwatch. Yeah, Overwatch Le- League or yeah. or or if I Ghost uh, from Call of Duty or something. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that was a great question. This? And a bit of bafflement there to close the podcast out. We both kind of yeah. ended it on a bit of a, oh. So if you'd like to baffle, delight, and amaze us with your questions, again, you can email wired at unplugged. Dot, no, 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 no. Unplugged at wiredproductions.com. Not wired at unplugged.com. I'm going to just quickly check what unplugged.com is right now because it might be really bad. Unplugged.com is, uh, I don't know, just some... It looks like it's a, an acoustic it looks venue. Like a, it looks like a scam. It, it's a phone. It's a it's a type of phone uh, that you can get. Don't don't go on unplugged.com. Don't contact them. It's not them. affiliated with us. Do not contact nah. them. It's unplugged at wiredproductions.com or you can tweet us at Wired Unplugged. That's the way that everyone else has asked questions. It's probably the best way for you to as well. So feel free to ask us some questions. Um, if you'd like to uh, also tweet us your predictions for the Game Awards, we can uh, check it out over the next couple of weeks. So I thought I'd let you know. Um, Aaron, you've been an absolute pleasure. And next time I see you, my friend, I'll be in a different home. So I'm excited. I can't wait for the, uh, the housewarming uh, meal. Absolutely. You're looking forward yeah. to it. Thank you, everybody, uh, for sticking with us. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the post-production uh, credits. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Stay safe. Wrap it warm, everybody. It's getting cold. Happy December. See you soon. Bye. Wired. Unplugged.